Thank you very much, everyone. Um, my name is Vahid Aryadus, and, and together with uh, Joanne Wong, we will be presenting our uh, talk today on AI-driven speaking examiner for formative speaking assessments. Actually, this is a teamwork, and some of our investigators' names are also there. I would like to recognize their role. Uh, Wenxing Zhang, uh, Jiang Xiang, and uh, Zhang Sai, and Ting Ting Liu. And, and uh, on behalf of them, Joanne and I are going to be are uh, going to be presenting the research with you. Next, please. Okay, so this talk is about formative assessment and also the role of artificial intelligence in formative assessment. So we'd like to start off by defining what formative assessment is. Out of so many def definitions out there, we have chosen this OECD to make our life easier. But basically, it, it uh, um, is uh, defined in this way, an assessment function used to provide feedback and adjust ongoing teaching and learning to improve students' achievements of intended outcomes. Um, so artificial intelligence has been used in formative assessment and, and generative AI is very commonly used in this form of assessment, as you know. In fact, uh, a lot of publications nowadays are about Gen AI, so much so that if it's not about Gen AI, people probably don't read your publication. At any rate, so Gen AI systems can analyze uh, students' spoken and written responses in real time. That's one of the magics that they can do. Uh, one of these Gen AI systems that we're going to use in this uh, research, we're going to uh, introduce, is spoken dialogue systems. Spoken dialogue systems have been around for a long time, of course, and I think language learning and language assessments uh, are th some of the last fields that adopted spoken dialogue systems because before this fields like medicine, education, and so on actually had adopted them for a variety of different purposes. Spoken dialogue systems um, are uh, seem to be very useful, especially given the fact that, uh, as research shows, they en enable learners to converse with automated agents orally. They offer dialogic and interactional practice opportunities, especially in the context of formative assessments. And importantly, they also show very good correlation with human rating, ratings if you use them as a rater. So I'm going to pass the time to my colleague, Joanne, who is going to take you through uh, some of the technicalities of uh, spoken dialogue systems. Right. So the traditional spoken dialogue system or SDS design is actually a modular one. So there are several individual modules like the ASR, um, dialogue management, uh, text to speech synthesizer, and they are stacked end to end. So they produce and uh, to pr process and produce speech. But this traditional design is actually very task oriented and rule based. So there is very limited flexibility and it's commonly used in summative and not formative assessment. So in speaking assessment, there's also an extension of this design where there's an automated scoring engine that operates alongside the dialogue manager so that the SDS can automatically provide scores to learners. And some examples of this um, such SDS uh, speech Rater by Education Testing Service and also Versant by Pearson. So there's also a newer type of um, SDS design that is also modular, but is LLM based. So speech input here is converted into text using also modules like ESR, but the LLM replaces uh, these three components over here um, to cover language understanding and response generation. And so the LLM-based SDS allows for a more adaptive and context-aware conversation, but it's also not perfect. There are still intermediate bottlenecks. It passes through like converting speech to text and text back to speech. Now, so far, most of the SDSs used in speaking assessment have been of the first type, but the traditional modular design has helped to achieve standardization and scalability um, at the cost of natural interaction. So some of the limitations are that it's task specific users only, and it's also limited in flexibility for open-ended interactions and engaging with higher order cognitive skills. So we also consider human factors in AI-driven speaking assessment. Um, the first being learner perception of the AI examiner, which can, um, which can influence learners' engagement, trust, and willingness to communicate with the AI examiner. 
And this leaves us with an open question of whether learners' perceptions of AI influence performance outcomes. So learners' perceptions of AI can then also affect the way they interact with the AI examiner. Um, so interactional behaviors like clarification requests and repair strategies, where sig which signal interactional competence can also end up affecting speaking performance outcomes. So in our present study, we observed that the increasing use of SDSs and conversational AI agents in L2 learning, language learning and assessment, um, and as LLMs demonstrate strong few short learning capabilities, this study examined whether GPT customized through GPT Builder with few short examples can serve as a reliable AI based language assessor. Which leads to our research question, how well does the GPT powered conversational AI agent align with human raters in scoring behavior? So uh, as Joanne said, our question is whether or to what extent GPT can be trained or can be um, um, customized and be used as a reliable rater um, in a spoken in the form of a spoken dialogue system. Our methodology is in one slide in the interest of time. Uh, we engaged 119 English major undergrads and we uh, developed the GPT that, that Joanne just talked about. Um, and one of the things that uh, is, is different in our study from some of the previous studies is that we allowed our language learners to choose their own topic because of form this is a formative assessment rather than a standardized summative assessment. Then we use that GPT um, customized uh, spoken customized GPT spoken dialogue system, uh, which basically has got um, uh, two sections when it comes to its assessment. In the first section, uh, the AI and the learner uh, start dialogue. Six questions are asked, and the, diff the level of difficulty, especially the cognitive challenge, increases according to the Bloom's taxonomy of critical thinking. And then uh, learners are required to do a four-minute monologue. The AI has been uh, customized in such a way that if the uh, uh, student asks any questions for clarity, for repetition, etc., it can easily do that. And it can simplify, it can slow down, it can slow down very much. And uh, actually, it, it sounds like a very uh, a natural um, a human being when you speak with it. Uh, the um, AI at the end provides analytic feedback as well as scores. The scores are provided on two dimensions. Dimension one is language, for example, it includes organization, task fulfillment, et cetera. And the second dimension includes critical thinking. And at the end, if learners still would like to continue the conversation with the AI, well, it continues to have a conversation, but this part will not have any weightage in their uh, scores. And another thing I wanted to say is that there are four human raters in this study together with GPT. And what we are doing is to compare the performance of these two groups of raters in terms of their reliability, severity, and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, we would like to present the results and discussion in one slide here. We used many facet rush measurement uh, in order to look into the rating behaviors and psychometric integrity of the scores uh, uh, presented by the AI on the left-hand side, as you can see, and the human raters on the right-hand side. Um, so what are some of the features that we observed in this psychometric analysis? We found that GPT was slightly, just slightly more severe than humans. Humans were generally more lenient, especially one of the human raters who was uh, extremely more lenient compared with the rest of the raters. We also found that uh, there was a systematic use of uh, rating scale. Um, a rating scale by the GPT, whereas there were more variables um, use of scale uh, by humans. There was a restricted score range in some dimensions in the GPT. And we also, in the same way, uh, observed some central tendency uh, errors in humans. In other words, the humans were avoiding extreme scores. And in some cases, we also found the same thing in GPT, but they were not exactly in the same categories. Then uh, in the um, analysis, um, well, I just want to... Um, can you go back to one? I, I want to add the last thing there. Um, in the analysis, we also found that the GPT was the most severe when it came to the pronunciation. We don't know exactly why it's very severe in scoring pronunciation, and it also had a very limited range. Our hypothesis that this 
point in time is that it's possibly more sensitive to prosody um, and other uh, linguistic cues that it picks from the speaker. Now let's have a look at the right map in uh, the uh, rush output. As you can see, there is a very good spread of the raters in terms of their severity level, um, uh, GPT, human one, three, and four clustering together, whereas human two is clustering on its own. So it creates two separation level for us. If you look at the uh, reliability statistics and uh, reliability separation in rush measurement, the uh, test takers or our learners are spread out very evenly and nicely. They look like a normal distribution if you look at it from that angle. And our items are also spreading I'm sorry, out. We have about 30 seconds left before we have to go to the next speaker. I'm yeah, sorry. and we only need 30 seconds to finish <laughs> this. And so um, moving on to the last slide, basically in conclusion, um, what we are suggesting is that it is possible to customize a GPT using the GPT builder without any codes. And that's one of the fascinating things in uh, this field. Um, it allows learners to become more agent, to take account um, accountability, and um, it allows them to personalize their learning. And finally, this form of GPT builder also has got uh, versatility and also some open-ended capacity, which we will be very happy to discuss during Q&A. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.